Welcome to another DTS support video. In this one, we're going to get show you a creative solution for coding live. So bear with me a little bit as I explain our setup, what we're doing, why we're doing it, and then uh, we'll get rolling in into the actual project. And so hopefully that it helps. Um, again, we're going to show you how a creative way to live code a game. And um, the ideal situation, of course, is there's two um, easier ways to do it. One is to get our coder program um, that puts a, a code window on an iPad or an iPhone. That's the easiest way to code live, or at least one of them. The other is uh, to have your laptop plugged directly into your camera, either through a Canopus box or a Firewire. Check out our um, capture videos on our support site for details on those workflows. This one is for the team that might be used that would be using either a hard drive camera that doesn't have a Canopus box or the camera is uh, somewhere else on the field that you're not able to live code and hook up the laptop. So what we're going to do is imagine taking this laptop down to the field with you. Uh, ideally what you're going to do is um, have a I mean, to make it easier on the person live coding, there's a lot of different philosophies, but one obvious thing to do would have like a little tray or a table or something to put the laptop on. Um, again, there's a, a couple pieces you'll want to consider when putting this together. One, power. Make sure you have enough power. Um, either run to the laptop or you'll want to charge it at halftime and make sure you got enough juice for that. The other is planning out your code window. I'll explain the one I have. Um, again, there's a lot of different ways you can approach this. I made mine small just so that through the demonstration you can kind of get an idea of what what's going on. Um, but if you're only live coding, you know, m make this big. Uh, then it's easier to see. Um, the other is when coding live specifically it, definitely from here if your table isn't big enough that you have your laptop on you're going to want to uh, have somebody coding that gets the hotkeys down that is the by, by far the best way to live code so that um, by knowing your hotkeys uh, your coder can just watch the game they don't have to look down find find the the key either with the trackpad or a mouse and then look up and have missed some key moments so uh, that's one. The other is definitely have a good assessment of the person coding their abilities. So to start simple. Start with very obvious things that they can just get really easily. Because uh, the way we're going to be coding here, there's no real editing uh, while they go. You can't rewind and redo something that messes up. So um, to, one solution to help with that is probably you can put down another button down here called fix this later something like that might help just to identify things that maybe got coded by mistake in the wrong area so that's why we coded this um, again through support and training and and maybe there's some videos that help uh, would explain the coloring of why I chose the colors I did I'm not going to explain that in this video but it's going to be uh, another key to post game analysis making this real easy so um, for our setup what you're going to basically do is uh, I, I've had I have this video up just for viewing so that you get the idea of what we're doing but um, when you're actually doing it again this is a laptop that's going to be down on the field not hooked up to anything you're just going to get a capture window and I'll show you that shortly um, so just to uh, make sure you understand this video when you're normally won't be there this, imagine, is your camera that's across the field. Uh, and then that we bring in later. And I'll show you how to put it all together. So to do this, you're going to click Capture. And you'll want to, when you do this, the, I think the toughest part or, or the most important part is you need to um, key up or synchronize the start of your capture on your Mac with the start of the capture of your actual camera. So a, a good idea for that would be to tell your camera crew, whoever's doing it, parent, player, and your coder on the side of the field, synchronize with the game clock. Two minutes before the game, start your capture or, or whenever you want. It's a good idea not to do it immediately when the game starts to give you that flex, but start the capture somewhere um, before that at, a, at the same point. Another thing that you can do is bring down a button on your code window and uh, maybe do this game start, something like that. Um, 
lead and lag time don't matter, and hotkey really really don't matter. But what what that allows you to do is um, get you a start point um, to to find when you actually started. So what I'll what you can do is when we do this, I will when they start the game, I'll click this game start. Let's see, I'm going to give myself a hotkey. Game start. That way when I bring in my timeline after the fact and link it up with the video, if, if the camera start, the camera capture start and my laptop start is a little off, this gives me a reference point of where to edit and move my clips in my timeline so everything syncs up nicely. So, um, so there you go. All right. So on the laptop, what you're going to do is start a capture, and you're going to see me right there. There we go. All right. I'm going to click capture. You can uh, name it whatever you want. I'm just going to leave it that. And then typically I'll just pause this. So get that out of the way. Get this up here. So basically we got our paused capture. And now what we're going to do is let's say two minutes are on the clock. I'm going to resume. And now we're going to start our video. We're going to wait. At this point, you're just coding. You're going to, um, I'm going to pretend like I'm the player. I'm watching the actual game. So I'm sitting watching the field waiting for this. And there's our pointer. Again, just a reference point. And now, um, key to this is so we're going to just, we're going to be the red team and we'll start around here. Um, got different philosophy. I've kept this pretty, tried to keep it simple on myself just so I don't have to have a whole lot going on um, while I'm coding. Again, that assessment of what uh, the abilities of your code are pretty key. And of course, um, as your staff, you'll want to um, get together and identify some of those key moments you want immediately after the game to analyze. Um, as you can see right now, I'm not coding anything because um, we're the red team. I picked them. We're, we're not going to... Um, I'm not really caring what, what they're doing at this time. I could be coding this. I know they get it, so I'm kind of a little bit cheating, but you'll see here in a second. So uh, I've, of course, practiced this. So um, one thing you probably will find as your coder gets used to things is they're going to be coding things that will need to be deleted or edited afterwards. Like they might start a coding that or you might code opponent throw-ins or something and find out hey we really don't need this so there is like an adjustment time or, or a learning curve uh, a suggestion for that is to kind of is to practice this if this is something you want to do you have to practice and the easiest place to do that is uh, preseason preseason postseason something like that all right we're gonna go we're gonna start coding this it is to do it preseason um, in some practices that way. That way they can not only have your code window practicing and you get into some moments here, and I know that goes back to the keeper. You go into some moments where you'll find, hey, we're really not looking at this. We're really not, don't need that. So to make your coder's process even easier. Code that. Oops. See, I messed that one up. It should have been to the right. As you can see, I'm coding by possession, our possessions. I'm not doing anything when the opponent gets the ball. Again, that that's just what I do. Right now, I got a couple other buttons here I can show you. I got corners, goals, some opportunities, crosses. Uh, these are pretty simple things to do. Um, as you can see, coding the possessions for our possessions is pre pretty simple. Um, you can break this down again more complicated, but uh, the other reason I have it is I want to show some of the flow of our play. Um, player possessions, player passes gets a little difficult to do while live coding because that's just a lot of that's a lot of clicking, and generally speaking, you're going to find some. Uh, pretty big mistakes in there. So we're going to come in here. This looks like I'm going to lay without an opportunity. Alright, we'll see what that does. We're going to 
stop our capture, stop our video, and this should just get you an idea. There I am. Um, here's our coding. There's our marker, some of the possessions we have. All right, now, so what we have here are two pieces, and I'll show you. At the end of the game, you have two pieces. This is our video. This is one I made before, so we don't need that. This is our video. This is our package. Um, that's me. That's going to be me. So your player's picture will be up here, or the bench, or whatever they're getting from the Mac camera. All right, so then we bring this, our video in, post-game from our hard drive camera, or whatever. Now all you do is open your Game Breaker package, link movie to timeline movie. It's going to ask you, there's already a movie linked to this timeline window. That's this. That's your players, which obviously we don't want. We don't need. So do you wish to link this to a new movie? Yes. And we're going to pick our game, open, and do you want to put this in a movie package? Yes. Now, so at the start of the game, we can see here, might have been a little off. So even, even I did. So there's going to be a little bit of editing, a little bit of moving that we're going to need to do. I gotta remember how to do. There we go. So it's Shift Option Command L. removes unused instance time to the right of the playhead so I hit my so basically what I did was I put the playhead where I wanted it to start which was my marker it's the importance of the marker which had a gap so let's see I don't think there so I can undo it so you can see I put my playhead where I actually want the video to start and you can see there's a gap here so um, command A selects all your clips shift option command and L will move everything to that left and remove that gap bumping everything back and now this opportunity should line up pretty nicely I gave it a little good long lead time and lag time again adjust that as you guys want but that gets me what I want we'll look at let's check out there's that 50 50 that came down again I might want to adjust my lead time on that a little bit but gets me a little bit of what I'm looking for so um, that's how you do it now you got your game package here. Oops. First half, sorry, wrong package. First half. Got your package here, all ready to go. Um, here's the colors briefly. Uh, I colored it so that my greens, some of my opportunities and things that I know as a team I want to work on shows up first in green. And then I have my field possession laid out forward, middle, and back. So I can analyze that. Shift it as you want. I could redo the colors to show me all my left possessions versus my right. So got some different options there. But short, that's how you do it. Get a little creative um, doing some live capture and coding. Um, hopefully you found that helpful. Until the next video, I'll see you.